Hi, this is Mark with Safe Day Trading. Are you interested in learning how to effectively trade the market for real-time profits? Do you want to supplement your income today or for your retirement? Discover how simple it is to make three to five hundred dollars a day when you have the Safe Day Trading dot system. I want to make it easy for you. Go to Safe Day podcast.com register for the free ebook your fundamental truth to making consistent money day trading also free safe day trading mini course learn the truth about trading safely and profitably and free eavesdrop trading session listen to us trade live and make real money daily follow the dot and make a lot Remember, it's all free. See you at SafeDayPodcast.com. And today with me I have Dan Raja, who is the CEO of Trade Year. Hey, Dan, how are you? I'm doing great, Mark. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, Dan, let's first of all, let's talk a little bit about what Trade Year is and how you got to where you're at so people have an understanding of your perspective, Okay. Oh, absolutely. I'd love to do that. Um, okay. See, trade, trade year is, we, we started trade year um, somewhere in the later part of 2012. The idea and the mission that we started the firm was uh, based on a set of very simple beliefs, um, and that is, you know, that we felt like um, the, the market was not catering to the, the slightly more sophisticated and more advanced or the more active trader. I think a lot of innovation is being uh, focused around, you know, around just small millennial apps. And so we all, we felt like the active trader, the folks who generate majority of the revenue in the market, majority of the volume in the market, and majority of what we call as uh, the participation in the market, we felt like we had to basically go ahead and um, do the right thing and take care of that customer base. Number two, as in we also felt like there's a fundamental change in the way the brokerage industry um, is uh, evolving. Um, the traditional idea that you know trading has to occur with us with, with with a brokerage firm, um, and, and and that one brokerage firm gives you everything that you need, was uh, particularly when you're treating with with the, with the more when you're dealing with the more active trader. Um, it, it, most active traders basically suffer from not having all the choices they need. So. And we wanted to solve that problem. And lastly, price. So we felt like you know there is there is not transparency in the market, and we wanted to bring uh, transparency to the market. So three fundamental things: number one is drive price transparency, create choice, and create great uh, platforms for the uh, for the more engaged investor in the market. We went about that with uh, with a very simple model. I mean, we we felt like. We need to bring in uh, great pricing, so we introduce what we call a subscription-based pricing. Today at Trade Year, you can trade for ten dollars. You can trade unlimited equity and options trading. And particularly if you're an options trader in the market, you're probably spending hundreds and sometimes even thousands of dollars per month on on execution costs. And we almost introduce the concept of a Netflix kind of pricing that's for ten bucks. Um, and then on 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 the aspect of basically driving. Uh, you know, uh, choice and to, to the market. We partnered with a lot of some of the best active trading platforms in the market and uh, and offer brokerage services. And in fact, you could use any platform and then you can actually trade from that. So your idea was that we partnered with hundreds of active trading platforms uh, in the market, all the way from stockcharts.com to now tradingview.com to, you know, a lot of, you know, options for you, options for quench, a lot of these great platforms that exist in the market. Uh, Trade Hawk. I mean, my the row. I mean, the list can go on forever. We we partner with all of them, um, and then we, we let them function as uh, fully full fledged trading platforms. So traders have a lot of choice in the market. And you know, and, and lastly, and most importantly, is the service that we provide. So we have excelled at service. If you ask any customer trader, they get the best service in the market. And so you know, that was the core fundamentals by which you know it, it, it is a technology driven. Um, and service-driven approach to brokerage. Uh, we today have grown to be one of the larger brokerage firms in the in the country with a very unique model. I mean, we have a set of uh, we basically a customer can for one flat price can choose between hundreds of products in the market and get the best service and basically and get the best execution. So that's what we are. We're you know we focus on options quite a bit. We're quite popular in that field. And you know that's the story. Start off in 2012. 
the business has evolved um, to a point where today we are we are we are we are, we are a sizable player in the market. Okay, well, let's let's talk a little bit about your perspective on what's going to go happen in 2022. We've had 2020, we've had 2021 have been both fairly interesting years, I would say. Uh, what's your what's your expectation? Well, let's take it into a couple of different slices here. What do you what's your expectation on traders? Is it going to continue to increase? Um, are they going to be more sophisticated and looking for more information or um, better quality systems? What do you think there? The pandemic, and I actually write about this, the, the pandemic has created a new version of the existing uh, retail consumer base, a little bit more sensitive, a little bit more hyper-reactive, a lot more people involved in momentum plays, um, and, and and most importantly, is there is a there is a level of anxiety in the market, right? So the pandemic has created this hypersensitive retail investor. So the market right now is is kind of basically you know spread across three buckets. Number one is a strategy and edge driven retail active trader. Um, then you have on the then you have a set of investors who have come into the market. We believe roughly around. 12 to 14 million new retail investors have come to the market uh, in 2020 and 2022, 2021. A very hypersensitive, very reactive. And then you have the third thing is people who come into the market and just you know play a little bit, get in and out when they uh, based upon their uh, lifestyles, and they're just the, what I call the traditional investors. So the market right now has got the traditional investors. Investors who are very, very hypersensitive and reactive, and, and, and then you've got the you got the traders who are, you know, very, very strategy driven, and most and, and they're the most successful guys too, right? In the sense that they they they're they're disciplined, they're they're education driven, they're content driven, um, and they know how, what the market is um, and know how to stay and how not to stay in the market. So, so you have this bucket of three blasts of investors that have been created, fresh new guys. Um, new guys have come in, but are very hypersensitive, and the more advanced are, what I call as you know traders, who largely a big chunk of them are doing options right now. So that's the landscape of the market that that I think the in a post-pandemic world that has been created. What is happening right now is a set of additional trends I think so are kicking in, and uh, and 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 it's I think it's fundamentally going to change the way the retail investor landscape is, is going to happen. And let me comment on those. Number one is I think you are going to see a continued increase in options trading. And the reason you're going to see that is I think um, the at home, and more and more people are, are at home more than they ever, ever before, very, very market-centered around their news and information cycles. They're learning options much faster than they ever did. And how to trade options. So I continue to see options as a as a growth sector in the market in 2022. Number two is, is internationalization of the brokerage space. I think one of the stuff that is happening in uh, in um, is not talked about is I think if you take a look at the actual the U.S. brokerage industry or people trading in U.S. listed securities, that market was largely 95 percent plus focus around a domestic U.S. trader. One of the stuff we see a fundamental trend is an internationalization of the U.S. brokerage market. I mean, in fact, you know, we believe that roughly around 3.5 to 4 million funded brokerage accounts have come into the country uh, from, 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 from citizens and residents of other countries, right? Mostly comes over to India is a huge, uh, Latin area is, is huge, the MENA area, the, the Middle East and North Africa region is huge, uh, the, some part of Europe is huge. So you have a fundamental, what I call as internationalization of the customer base that is occurring. Now, why that is important for people like me and you and all of them is how the market reacts is not purely going to be dependent upon domestic policy and domestic events that trigger changes. I think you, you're going to see internationalization basically happening quite a bit. So something that could happen in a local environment uh, with millions of accounts in India could impact actually how the market moves in the U.S. So that's another trend that we fundamentally see. And I see regulation. Um, and I see um, regulation actually, uh, I see the new administration uh, focusing on regulation. Uh, things are going to take longer than 
what the administration thinks and also I think what everyone thinks. But I think they are certainly trying to approach it the right way. You are going to see um, a set of regulations focused around transparency to the market, protecting the end customer. Um, crypto, right, which has also become a dominant asset class in this year, is going to have to deal with the fact that it's going to be a slightly more regulated stack. Um, and you'll see some what I call is alignment between the way the regulators treat traditional equity and options and also future and, and futures and also and also crypto. So the main trends that I see, um, like, like I was saying, was the internationalization of the brokerage account. Uh, number one, growth is options. Uh, growth in options and um, and 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 and, uh, and largely around you know regulation and and, and crypto. I think there's all these um, all these trends are going to kick in. Uh, a lot of people have asked me more recently about you know about the meme stock rallies and you know SPACs basically gaining value with with you no know, revenue underneath it and stuff like that. But I think that meme stock rallies that you see, I expect them to taper off in 2022. Uh, primarily because I think the, there is an educational aspect in the market, number one, that people are going to how to deal with the market, and people will be less, more hypersensitive um, uh, post-pandemic than they ever were. So that's my take. So when you, you know, you mentioned uh, all of these new stu- uh, traders coming in and they're trading, you know, primarily trading options, it means there's going to be a requirement for a lot of education then for those people, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think. I think the if 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 you, yeah. I think see what happens to these customers is when they come in, and you know when when we were when we got into the market we all used to do traditional equity. After a few years, you know we would apply to a brokerage firm to basically get eligible for options, and then we would start off small, learn our way, um, and do it. I think right now you have. A graduation effect that is much more rapid, where people learn socially, react socially, and trade options much quicker. But I think you're seeing that that curve where they're hitting limitations on what they can do and how they can. Particularly when the markets are going to get a little bit more tapered down in the coming years, I think that uh, I, I think there will be a tremendous need for education in the market. I think educational firms are going to be the key, and I think they're going to be the key for multiple things. I think. Uh, graduating students who are coming from traditional equity and crypto who are trying to get into options will basically want that mentorship and content and edge and signals and support they need, number one. I think um, I think the regulation is also going to push people towards being, and you know, and how regulation works is generally the regulation, the button for the regulator is, is broker dealers like us, and you know, and we would, and we would require customers to basically have a little bit more higher thresholds to deal with, uh, to accept options, traders, and so I think that's going to force education. So I think, um, even from the regulation, regulatory push, I think um, options education is going to be huge. But I think the the nature of education is going to be different. I just don't think. People will seek education, like going up and signing up for a course. I just don't think that's the way. Um, that's the way I think uh, education is going to, to occur. I think people consume education in in, in bite sizes, um, and people learn incrementally. I think um, so. Yeah, there there will be a tremendous need for education in the market, but I think the way that education is going to be uh, what we call as distributed is not through courses. Uh, primarily, I think courses will have a role to play, but I think it's mostly going to be in a more engaging model, where customer, where traders will seek out to influencers, and influencers will basically be able to be a part of their learning story, and they learn and and travel together. So that kind of what we call as influencer micro community driven content in small bites education is probably going to see a lot more promise, and you see that. I mean, the reason why. Um, so many people are on the Discord groups or the Reddit groups or the Wall Street bet communities. It's very easy for us to basically, you know, uh, push that aside uh, in the industry and say there there are a bunch of uh, traders who are you know, who, who are momentum players. But but I think if you go to the heart of why people go there, um, it, it it has much less to do with them wanting to. It has something to do with them wanting to than in the market, but it has the main starting driver why they get there is education. I think that kind of consumption of education um, and firms who are able to play that 
that we, that way of distributing content and education will have a huge role to play in the market. So if I understand what you're saying is education is going to be taken down from classroom and lengthy lectures to uh, let's say YouTube, YouTube bits where you're looking at 10 to 15 minutes worth of information that they gather and then uh, consume and then continue on, right? Yeah, YouTube, podcasts, um, Discord communities, Reddit, yeah. Reddit kind of yeah. communities. So it's all micro-consumption, a continuous micro-consumption of content is what I call that. Right. Okay. Now, let's, um, one of the things that, you know, I've heard over the last, well, I guess the last year since the election is that there was an anticipation. You've got inflation now at 6.2. Um, the Dow is hitting new records all the time. Um, mm -hmm. Gold is back up to 1850. Do you think there's, I mean, you know, just uh, briefly, do you think there's going to be a, uh, a correction where, you know, we look at that 20 to 30 percent drop, or do you think that that's uh, not going to happen? I mean, I, see, I, 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 I know it's I mean, tough. There is, no, I agree. I agree. It's a tough question. But see, at the end of the day, there is no, nobody in their right logical thought process will think that this kind of a bullish run will run for, for uh, I mean, uh, will go forever, right? I mean, it's just, it, it's neither, it, at some point of time, all of us know that we are working through a net, a net zero sum game, right? So I think there is going to be a correction in the market. But I, at the same time, I think there are some realities that that kind of an assumption is not thinking it through. And that is, you have to realize that the market is much bigger than it ever was, right? So, and the drivers of the market are so much more globalized right now than they ever were. So I expect a correction to occur, and I expect it to occur in small micro pockets and incremental over a longer period of time than a dramatic drop overnight. You know, somebody once, somebody once said that, you know, disruption and market corrections, um, um, by the time people talk about it, it's, it has already occurred. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think that, well, that's they, you know, the way that, that They say that, you know, by the, t by the time you figure out something, the, the, you know, Wall Street's already put it in, you know, it's already figured out in the numbers, like you say. Uh, right. So, right. you know, you're late. Um, do you think yeah, it's because... Like, but, but, uh, I think it'll take a long time. I, I just don't expect any correction. Uh, particularly because uh, I don't think we'll be able to identify a correction, number one, and number two is I think the market is much larger. And, and right now I think there is tremendous room for growth uh, in the market. So I don't expect an immediate correction, but that being said, I expect a tapering off of the rate of, uh, the rate of, uh, of growth in the market uh, quite a bit. And, and what is your thoughts on crypto? I mean, you know, a couple, of three or four years ago, crypto was kind of a, I don't know, you know, the younger the younger daughter, younger kid. You think it's going to become more of a significance in the, in the financial system? Yeah, I actually think that I, I fundamentally think that you know uh, today, right now, in terms of retail interest, and you know, we get tradier get the chance to see hundreds of platforms connected to our APIs, and what we see is that it, this is what we feel: crypto is here to stay. It is going to be this for a, for a little while to come. It's probably going to be the, the second most popular um, asset class after equities and options, right? I think it's, it's going to be the and and the reason is the reason is fundamentally driven by the fact that I think the retail investors, particularly the next generation, understand that uh, that product. In fact, I was I was at the Money Twenty Twenty event in Vegas the week before last week, and I was speaking to a bunch of traders, and, you know, what I, I walked into the conversation saying they seem to have a transparent understanding of what happens in the crypto world. As much as we don't, we don't think they do, they do. They have at least uh, a pulse of what happens in the crypto market than, than the equities market, right? And so I think crypto is here to stay. Um, crypto will be a dominant asset class. 
uh, particularly because I think for uh, there's a retail interest, number one, and number two is, you know, we ourselves at Tradier are, will be launching crypto in Q1, right? And and, number two, and and that's because broker dealers like us basically see the flexibility and and the ability for um, you know to serve retail customers in ways that like like it, it could never be done before. Um, so I think the industry is going to push it. Number one, uh, it's a, it, it it has the elements of a monetizable monetizable model, and there's retail interest. So I think crypto is here to stay. But that being said, I think that there will be a set of fluctuations between now and when the regulatory policy around how uh, the regulation is going to impact that become clear. So until and I say this to all my crypto crypto, crypto uh, traders and, and, and people who follow it, you know, regulation is the best thing that can happen to crypto because it, it kind of adds a level of legitimacy to that, uh, to that asset class. So I think there's going to be a little, quite a bit of bumps between now and, uh, and uh, a good regulatory umbrella and mitigating controls over crypto, but I think crypto is here to stay. There is retail interest, and there is, in, there is the industry's interest in pushing that, um, so everybody's off in the part. So I expect it to stay. I mean, the, the question really is for a long time, for the last, you know, 30 years, right? I mean, apart from online traders, you're in the, you're in the equity and the option, you know, in the equity space, or, or you know, the, if you want to trade in the alternate asset class, I mean, you would do, primarily go to futures. Now, I know there is some overlap the way futures in the crypto industries are evolving, but I mean, I could certainly tell you that based upon the customer feedback, we say we see a lot more interest on crypto uh, these days from the younger investors than than futures. So. Sure, sure. Well, Dan, we're uh, running out of time, and uh, I always appreciate <clears throat> your insight. You have, because, you know, you're, you're there in the trenches, uh, you've got some fascinating insight about what's happening. How can people get a hold and find out about trade here? The best way to, get, get to, to, to link up to trade here is just go to, you know, www.tradeyear.com. Um, and, you know, we've, uh, folks will be very happy to hear you um, and talk to you. And you know, it, it, just reach out if you're looking for a platform, services. If you're trying to invest in the market, we're here to serve you. Yeah, so the best way is to basically just go to tradeyear.com and the contact information is out there on, on the web. And if you just leave a message or you call, somebody will always pick up the phone, and uh, we'll be happy to serve you. Great. Well, Dan, thank you very much for your time. And uh, this is Mark Stowers with Safe Day Trading. Talk to you later. Hey, everybody. I want to mention, too, that we have a YouTube site called Safe Day Trading, which we show you trades that we make with the techniques that we use. You can also send me uh, questions that you might have at mark at safedaytrading.org. Anyway, talk to you later.